Shalom, welcome to another Hebraic Roots teaching and this forms part of our series in preparing yourself for Passover. And today I'd just like to emphasise on why it is that we should pay so much attention to Passover and why it should be a part of every Christian's um, life. It's all about Yahweh, Yahweh's time. And so if it's important to Yahweh, if it's important to God, you have got to make it important to you. If God says, I command you to celebrate this feast, then you've got to pay attention. Yahweh, um, God says, it's my feast. It's my appointed time. It's sacred to me. And so if it's important to God, it's got to be important to you. Scriptures talk about it being a remembrance forever. It's an anniversary. If you're married and you have an anniversary, do you forget about it just because you had your wedding? Every year you celebrate your anniversary. Why? Because it's important between, it's an important covenant that you have between your husband and yourself. And so you take um, precedence of that fact. You celebrate your anniversary. And so Yahweh says that we must celebrate this as a remembrance. A lot of believers will miss the mark. They'll miss their blessing because they do things in their own rhythm. But there is a spiritual rhythm. There is a, a higher pattern that is governed in the heavenlies. And Yahweh says that we should celebrate these things for the advantage of being in line with his timing and his rhythm and his principles. Ecclesiastes speaks about there's a time for everything. A time to be happy and a time to be sad. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to um, reap and a time to sow. There's a time for everything. And Passover has a specific time. Yahweh says, God says, don't stand before me empty handed. And if you miss Passover, you will stand before Yahweh empty handed, whether you know it or not. What is the Passover about? The Passover is about deliverance. It's about spiritual maturity. It's about releasing yourself from bondage. It's about the demonstration of the power of Yahweh. Yahweh showed himself to be extremely powerful towards Pharaoh. How many of you have a Pharaoh in your life? It's all about God's demonstration of his power. Are you a Christian, I ask? Are you a believer in the Messiah? Do you believe in Yeshua? If you believe in Yeshua, you will know that in order to become a Christian, the blood of Jesus is the most important thing. The blood of Jesus is a fulfillment of Passover. Jesus came to fill the Passover. Yeshua is our Passover lamb. The entire reason for Christianity is the blood of Yeshua, which is the blood of the Passover lamb. Christ is our Passover. So this is central to being a Christian. It is central to being a Messianic Jew. It is central to the entire Bible. And this is exactly why God says you must celebrate it. There is no debate. We are to celebrate the blood of Jesus. What did Yeshua say? Yeshua says, as often as you do this, remember me. He was talking to his disciples in the upper room and they were having the last supper and Yeshua said whenever you do this 
remember me. What was Yeshua talking about? Yeshua was talking about the Passover meal. Yeshua was saying, whenever you celebrate the Passover, you are to remember me. Paul talks about in Acts and in Corinthians, Paul says, celebrate Christ, the Passover lamb. So even in the New Testament, we are to celebrate Christ, the Passover lamb. Not Christ, the Easter bunny. That is incorrect. Christ, the Passover lamb. Passover is so important. Passover is so important. Passover is so important. It celebrates Yeshua winning victory on our behalf. Every Christian should understand and make a note of Passover in their diaries every year and celebrate Passover. Because Christ says, as often as you do this, you remember me. It's so important. I hope you will understand that. I would like you to see that there's so many doctrines of devils. There's so much doctrines of devils designed to diminish the Passover within our own lives. Christians have no power and they lack knowledge because they do whatever they want to do. They just do what, however they feel like doing it at whatever time. That's Christianity today. And it's wrong. It's doctrines of devils. Christians take communion randomly. What do I mean by that? They will go to church on a Sunday, a Saturday, a Friday, whichever day you choose as your Sabbath. You go and you take your communion as and when you feel like it. What does scripture say? Scripture says that if you take the Passover meal, anyhow, you will get sick. There will be sickness in your body. Why? Because you lack respect and reverence for the feast of God. It is not a random occasion. It is not to be done as you feel like doing. You do it in alignment with the scripture, the holy scripture, which says to celebrate the Passover at a specific time designed by Yahweh. We are not to take communion on random days at church. That is doctrines of devils. Little children, listen to me. The elite will be deceived. The elect of God will be deceived. If you do not live in your scripture, and if you do not read your scripture, and if you do not know your scripture, you will be deceived. I challenge anybody who's listening to this, Show me a scripture that says you must take Holy Communion randomly. There's no scripture. It's not in the Holy Bible. Moving on to the next point. Easter, chocolate, rabbits, bunnies, paganism. There is Easter has nothing to do with scripture. The only reason why some of the translations of the Bible contain the word Easter is because Constantine had infiltrated the church at an early stage and they put the word Easter into the scriptures. Chocolates and bunny rabbits have nothing to do with the blood of Jesus. Absolutely nothing. Yeshua was not sacrificed on Friday. There is no such a thing as Good Friday. Yeshua was sacrificed on uh, just before the Holy Sabbath. And the Holy Sabbath is measured by the moon. If you read your scripture, you will see that the sun was blackened on that day. Yeshua was crucified at a full moon. I challenge you, I challenge you, go read your scriptures. Got nothing to do with Good Friday. Another doctrines of devils, if you watch TBN, throughout my videos, I will be talking about TBN. 
Trinity Broadcasting Network, loads of doctrines of devils. They will say that it's now Passover and you should give a seed. That is blasphemy. The seed we present to God is the blood of Yeshua. It's the blood of Yeshua that makes us able to enter in to the Holy of Holies. Not your money, not the prosperity gospel. When we stand before God with our hands full, we stand before God with a lamb, and that lamb is the blood of Jesus, not finances. If you're giving a seed to the altar of TBN, it's a doctrine of devils. They have replaced the blood of Yeshua with money, and that is blasphemy. They talk about Good Friday, that you should not eat red meat. It's the opposite of what scripture teaches. The Passover is about eating lamb, because lamb is part of the Passover meal. And the Passover meal you know, I just get so frustrated with these doctrines of devils. On Good Friday they have uh, fish. They say you shouldn't eat red meat because Christ died and his blood was shed. Completely opposite to what we instructed in the scripture. The scripture instructs us to eat the lamb and lamb is red meat. More doctrines of devils. There's Lent, 40 days of Lent before Passover or before Easter. There's Shrove Tuesday, which here in the United Kingdom, they will have Pancake Day and celebrate by having pancakes. And it's the first day that you become a glutton and have as many pancakes as you like because during Lent you're not supposed to have sugary things or you're supposed to give up something that you're supposed to, uh, you know, be fasting about. It's all, it's all paganism. Listen, little children, that the prince of this world is Satan. And if he has given us public holidays over Easter and over Christmas, then you should question why it is that we've been given these public holidays. Why would the prince of this world, who is Satan, give us public holidays on these events? The reason being is because they are not Yahweh's public holidays. They're not Yahweh's holidays. They're Satan's holidays. Easter is not equal to Passover. Easter has got to do with fertility. It's a pagan ritual that involves fertility symbols. And if you know that a woman has ovaries, that's part of her reproductive system, that's how you make children with ovaries, they are eggs in a woman's womb, well, the pagan symbol at Easter is an egg. And an egg is a symbol of fertility. It has absolutely nothing to do with um, Passover and nothing to do with the Torah. I'd like to draw your attention to the dates. The dates of when Passover is and when Easter is. If you look at Daniel, the book of Daniel, it talks about the son of perdition. He will come to change times. He's, t he's changed the times to make his own calendar. The calendar is the Gregorian calendar. Yahweh's calendar is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. Now, it's only one verse and we should all know it and I encourage you to go look at it. There is nowhere in scripture that says the Sabbath is on Saturday, on Sunday or on Friday. Nowhere. I challenge you to go and look and find that. The Sabbath is dictated by Genesis 1, chapter 14. The Passover is dictated by Genesis 1, chapter 14. 
So the dates are designed to specifically deceive Christians so that we miss what's important to Yahweh and we do not follow in obedience. And I said in my presentation on worship, I would encourage you all to go and watch the video on worship. If you are not worshipping Yahweh, you are worshipping Satan. And obedience is an act of worship. Easter will always fall on a weekend because you've got Good Friday, Easter Saturday, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Monday or something like that. So Easter's always on a weekend. Passover can be at any time. It's not according to the Gregorian calendar. It's according to when the moon is at its peak. Passover is measured by the moon, by the lunar calendar, not by the Gregorian calendar. For this reason, Passover and Easter don't always coincide. You'll notice that this year it coincides because the moon is full on the weekend and Easter is on the weekend. And so this year it's by chance that it's together. But if you look back in history, if you go back and look at the dates, sometimes Passover and Easter are at different times because Easter is always on a weekend and Passover can be at any day because it depends on the moon. So obedience is important. You have a choice now. To know something and to not do it is a sin. That's what the Bible says. If you know something and you don't do it, you're sinning. So, you have a choice. Everyone has a choice. Once they're given information and once they have knowledge, they now have a choice to follow through with being obedient. You can choose to worship Yahweh or you can choose to do things as the world does them. And if you're operating in the world system, don't expect Yahweh to pay attention to you. Yahweh commands us. It's a commandment. To observe the feast of Passover and Satan uses the distraction of Easter. Many Christians are pagans doing their own thing. They do things as they feel, they go with their emotions, they take communion as they feel like it and not how it is spoken about in Passover. And so these videos that I'm presenting are, are an attempt to try and you know, put people on the right path in understanding what Yahweh actually wants from us. You can see that we're drawing closer and closer and closer and closer to the return of the Messiah, which is Yeshua. And the closer we get, the more deception there is. So it's so important to do what's in your power to do, to be obedient. Because if you're not being obedient now, you will take the mark of the beast in the end. So, every year we rehearse, you know, we do it in remembrance of Christ. We celebrate the anniversary of Christ's death. We take on the meal and we, we eat his flesh and we drink his blood, remembering his sacrifice. It is a reminder, Christ said, I will not drink of the of the, the vine, which is uh, wine, until I sup with you again. So Christ is interceding on the, the right-hand side of the Father on our behalf, uh, waiting to be rejoined with his bride so that we might be able to drink the fruit of the vine together. So I'm going to ask you, who are you worshipping? Are you following Yahweh's commandment to celebrate the Passover? Or are you randomly taking communion at pagan churches? Or randomly doing it in your house as and when you feel like it? Take a moment to think about that. Who are you worshipping? Because you can only worship one or the other. You cannot make excuses. The scriptures are clear of what we are to do and what we aren't to do. And the reason why Christians are so haphazard and doing their own thing is because the pastors are not teaching correctly. The elders of the church are not teaching correctly. 
They're designed to teach you half a gospel to keep you coming back to them, you know, so you don't grow and learn and become a fruitful child of the Most High God. They want you to depend on them, these pastors. You know, they'll give you half information, and it is wrong. It's designed to keep you in Egypt. It's designed to keep you in bondage. It's designed to keep you in slavery. It's designed to keep you worshipping Satan. Passover is about deliverance. It's about coming out of Egypt. It's about spiritual freedom. Let's look at Yeshua. Yeshua celebrated the Passover. Let us not forget that Yeshua is Jewish. Yeshua is not Western. Yeshua is not pagan. Yeshua was a Jewish boy who celebrated the Passover. Yeshua fulfilled the Passover in becoming our lamb. Yeshua said to his disciples, Go and prepare for the Passover. So if Yeshua prepared for the Passover, how much more do we need to prepare for the Passover? Preparation is at three levels. It's preparation of the mind, preparation of the body, preparation of the house, preparation of the spirit, preparation of the soul. Purge out the unleaven, uh, because a little leaven leavened the whole lump. We are to purge ourselves before Passover. The blood of Yeshua is not in vain so we can continue to sin and ask for repentance. The blood of Yeshua is there for those who are truly removing the yeast from their life. Christ did not die for us to go about vainly committing sin. Christ came to be our Passover lamb for the redemption and the salvation of all those who believe. And if you're truly repentant, you turn your back on sin, you turn your back on the world. If this presentation upsets you, it's probably because you enjoy Easter and you want to be pagan. But I will tell you the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth is, if it's important to Yahweh, it must be important to you. Get that in your brain. If it's important to Yahweh, it must be important to you. And Passover is all about the blood of Jesus. And it's the blood of Jesus that makes us Christian. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us uh, be able to become seeds of Abraham. Without Passover, you and me are nothing. We are lost like the entire world. So I'm going to ask you, are you going to be prepared for this Passover season? Make what's important to Yahweh important to you. It's a five-part series. And in the five-part series, we're going to be talking about, from Genesis to Revelation, how the blood is important for the redemption of sin and how Christ has fulfilled the Passover. Preparation starts with making your heart right. If your heart is not right, it's impossible to celebrate the Passover. Yahweh says, do not stand before me empty-handed. If you're not prepared for the Passover, you will stand before Yahweh empty-handed. And you would have missed your opportunity to really... Um, you know, be in line with the things of God. 
And so now, just for five minutes as an introduction to the Passover in Egypt, I'd like to play a clip for you to listen. And it basically speaks about the Passover in, um, in Egypt. I hope you'll enjoy it. More than 3,000 years ago, God commanded the Jewish people to celebrate the Passover. Jesus himself celebrated this holiday every year. And today, millions of Jewish people around the world gather each spring for a Passover meal. Now, we Jews for Jesus want to invite you to experience this ancient feast through this presentation of Christ in the Passover. It's the next best thing to having you at our home for the holiday. This video features David Brickner, Executive Director of Jews for Jesus. To enhance your understanding and enjoyment of this program, we've also included scenes of some of our family during Passover, informational graphics, music, and artwork. And now, let's join the audience as David Brickner explains the Christian significance of the ancient Jewish festival of Passover. It was all part of God's plan from the beginning to break down that middle wall of partition, dividing Jews and Gentiles, and to make us one together in the body of Christ. So we're one this morning in Him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. But you know, you know, because of that, you share with me in a rich heritage, the heritage of the people of Israel and all that God did to reveal Himself through the fathers and through the prophets and through the festivals of Israel. This now becomes your heritage in Messiah. And this morning, we're going to look more closely at one aspect of that in the story of the Passover. The Passover is the account of God's redemption of the nation of Israel from bondage, from slavery in Egypt thousands of years ago. But this morning, as we look more closely at that ancient festival of redemption, you're going to see that God, in bringing Israel out of bondage, wove into the very fabric of that story a picture of a far greater redemption of all the world from the Egypt of sin through our Passover lamb, who is Jesus the Messiah. So I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bibles, if you have them, to that first Passover story, which you'll find in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, and we'll be reading verses 5 through 8 and 11 through 15. Now, if you remember at this time, Israel was in bondage. We were enslaved in Egypt, and God promised he was going to redeem us. So he raised up Moses to go to the Pharaoh of Egypt and say, Pharaoh, let my people go. Well, Pharaoh wasn't exactly willing to listen to Moses, and so God had to convince Pharaoh to listen, and God can be very convincing about these things. And he convinced Pharaoh by sending a series of plagues upon the land of Egypt. You remember the story. There were ten plagues in all. Now, the Bible tells us that the Jewish people at this time were living in a section of Egypt called Goshen, and they were exempt from the first nine of those ten plagues. For example, the Bible tells us when darkness fell across the land of Egypt as a plague from the Lord, there was nevertheless light in Goshen where the Israelites were dwelling. Or when God smote the cattle of the Egyptians with plague, the cattle of the Israelites were spared. And yet Israel was not automatically exempt from the tenth plague, the worst plague, the death of the firstborn. But in order that that plague should not fall upon them, God commanded the children of Israel to take a yearling lamb for each family. And that's where we pick up the story, Exodus 12 and verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and you shall take it up from the sheep or from the goats and keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorposts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. 
And the blood shall be to you for a sign upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. That, then, is the historical institution of the Passover. We know that the first Passover, then, was celebrated on the night of the tenth plague way back in the land of Egypt. But as God commanded here in Exodus 12, Israel was to continue to celebrate the Passover as a lasting ordinance. And so, throughout our history, as we observe this great festival, there were various symbols and traditions that were added to the observance to remind us of that first Passover back in the land of Egypt. So that by the time Jesus and the disciples were celebrating the Passover, most of the items that you see on the table before you today were already incorporated into that Passover observance. And there's a tremendous amount of preparation that goes into the celebration of the Passover. You might remember in the Gospels that Jesus even sent Peter and John ahead of him into the city of Jerusalem, saying, go, prepare the Passover that we may eat. And this preparation involves many things, but specifically what God commanded the children of Israel to do back in the land of Egypt, we were to cleanse our houses of all leaven, anything with yeast in it which of course means that today all your Wonder Bread, all your Hostess Twinkies have to go. But because Passover comes during the springtime, this has become a time for a general house cleaning. And in the Orthodox Jewish home, mom begins weeks in advance of Passover cleaning. Everything from floor to ceiling is cleaned, and there's even a whole Okay, so you see that the last point there is the spring cleaning. So there's also a physical uh, sort of clean-up. It's not just a spiritual clean-up, it's a uh, physical one. So I hope that started us uh, the ball rolling for us to be uh, looking towards studying the Passover in Egypt. Uh, that will be the next presentation. I hope this presentation has touched on the fact that Passover is important and we need to make what's important to God important to us. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that you will share, and I pray you'll be blessed. Shabbat Shalom.